Today we're about to go over the various tools you're going to be using on the manual mill for future projects. We're going to be showing you guys the tools individually, kind of going over them briefly. And we're going to be going over face milling, drilling, end milling, and roughing and finishing and showing you which tools to use and what materials. And let's just go ahead and jump in this thing. So the very first thing I'm going to talk about is holders, what you can hold in the manual mill. This is a solid holder and it's for rigidity. So you got either one or two set screws that go on the side and you get the exact same size tool, put it in the bore and then tighten on it with the set screws and that makes it a lot more rigid. All right, very next thing is what you're gonna see most often is the collet holder. All right. All right, right after that is the drill chuck. Okay, you can put drills in here, reamers, taps, countersinks. You don't want to put end mills in here. I see a lot of people that put end mills in uh, drill chucks when they first start. You want to put end mills in solid holders for rigidity or you can put them in collet holders. All right, and you got your drill chuck key right here to open and close the drill chuck. All right, after that, the very first tool I'd like to talk about is going to be the center drill. The center drill is meant to spot face for drills so they do not lead off. And that's all they're really for. All right, this is your standard jobber length drill. And when it comes to drills, what I would suggest buying is a cobalt. It's cheaper than carbide, more, a little bit more expensive than high, standard high speed steel, but they last a hell of a lot longer. And I would suggest getting 135 degrees tip degree drill. You can buy them at 118 degrees. You can do that for, you know, a softer material for like aluminum and plastic. They need to be a little sharper, a little bit more pointy, but 135 degree does great on steel. And you want to make sure to center drill for a jobber length drill. But when it comes to a stub drill, which is what you're looking at now, it's a lot uh, more rigid and short stub drills are and I would suggest getting using a stub drill if you can because you do not have to center drill for it. It's a lot faster than loading up two tools and they're a lot more rigid, okay? Right after that, after you drill something you want to countersink it to debar it. This is a countersink. This one is a 90 degree countersink. So if you got a metric flathead, you can also uh, countersink for a metric screw with a 90 degree countersink so that the head doesn't stick above the, the part. When it comes to standard bolts, standard flatheads, you want to use an 82 degree. But if you're just deburring, I would suggest using 120 degree. Sometimes when you countersink with a 90 degree or an 82, it kicks up a burr just a little bit, but 120 degrees seems to do a little better just to break the edge. Okay, right after that, I would like to talk about taps. This is your standard cutting tap. You'll see these a lot. Right after that is your CNC plug tap, which is right here. This is also just a cutting tap. These are a little bit more rigid. I would suggest if you're gonna just tap a bunch of steel parts to go online and look up CNC plug tap, they seem to do great. Now the very next tab that I'm going to talk about, a lot of people don't know about, but is very, very helpful. And usually when I get people introduced with a thread former, which is what this is called, they stick with a thread former and they never go back. Because the difference between a standard cutting tab and a thread former, which is what you see, is a cutting tab cuts material, which loads material in the bottom of the hole, and a thread former just forms the thread and it does not actually cut anything. So you can go an inch deep inside of steel and it would do great. It does good in stainless, your standard steels, it does good in aluminum. You do not, however, want to use a thread former in plastic because you want to actually cut material out of the plastic. Otherwise, it's just going to make your hole bigger and it's not going to form anything in plastic. All right, the very next tool is also a thread former. It has a little bit more of a lead in. 
And if you look on drill charts, uh, our drill chart that we can send you, if we haven't already, has a place for thread formers to tell you what size drill hold the drill because you actually have to drill a little bigger for a thread former as opposed to a cutting tap. So make sure you know the difference before you start drilling. All right, right after that is gonna be reamers. So after you drill something, let's say this is a half inch reamer. You wanna drill five to 10 thou under a half inch and use a reamer and we'll tell you what feeds and speeds on what materials later, but what a reamer does is it makes a very, not necessarily straight hole, but a very accurate diameter hole because if your drill drills at an angle, your reamer is gonna follow that drilled hole at an angle. So we're gonna show you guys how you can fix a angle drilled hole to ream it straight in later lessons. But for now, this is a reamer and it's just meant to get an accurate diameter for your hole because drills will tend to drill under or over the size that you have. All right, after that is gonna be a counterbore. A counterbore is meant for uh, just, just bolts, so if somebody says they don't want a bolt sticking above the part, they want you to counterbore it, then this is what they mean. What you do is you get a, if somebody says they wanna hide a five millimeter bolt on this hole or something like that, you get an M5 counterbore and that's meant for an M5 bolt. You measure the pilot, which is gonna be this little stub piece hanging out and you drill a few thousandths over it and you just uh, counterbore it to where the head of the bolt doesn't stick out of the part. And sometimes on prints, they'll just point, point at a hole that looks like a counterbore and they'll just say counterbore for an M5 hole. So you grab an M5 counterbore and you start cutting metal. Okay, so the very next tools is gonna be end mills. All right, so end mills, there are aluminum and plastic roughers and then there are steel roughers. This end mill right here is a high speed steel with a coating on it, tin coating. And then this is meant for aluminum and plastic. As you can see, it has serrated edges on it so that it does not load up uh, material, which means that whenever you're cutting aluminum with a four flute carbide end mill, if you don't use any oil and you wanna rough real fast, then it's just gonna stick inside of these flutes and it, it's just gonna break your end mill. So what you wanna do on aluminum and softer materials is get a high speed steel, serrated edges, and use oil, and it, it cuts like a dream. So be sure to do a little bit of research in that, watch some of our videos, and it cuts a lot better on aluminum than a four flute carbide end mill. All right, this is a, also an aluminum rougher. This has no coating on it, it's just high speed steel. Also has serrated edges. As you can see, the flute length is a lot shorter. And this is just a standard rule for any tool. You don't want to hang out more than you have to. If, you, if you're only cutting a half inch, only have 600 thou hanging out of your holder, your solid holder, your collet holder. It's a lot more rigid, get, leaves a better finish, it's more accurate, it doesn't chatter. So if you can never get away with a stub drill or a stub end mill, I would highly, highly suggest doing so. All right. Very next thing is an aluminum ball, or, um, aluminum ball nose high speed steel cutter. And as you can see, it also has the serrated edges and all that's for is so it breaks a better chip. Now you can use these high speed steel cutters on plastic, basically anything soft. All right, this is an aluminum two flute high speed steel finisher. If you're ever finishing aluminum, you can also use a four flute carbide end mill. You just don't wanna use that carbide end mill for roughing because it tends to load up more. The very next tool is a, we're gonna show you what these ball noses are used for, but it's called the ball nose. It's round, has a radius on the tip. This is a high speed steel ball nose finisher. All right, the very next few tools are gonna to be for steel. This is a very mill or a half inch rougher. And the difference between a roughing end mill and a finishing end mill for steel is if you can look right here, there's another relief that is ground in. And at first you might not be able to tell the difference, but as you work in the trade a little bit longer, you'll be able to definitely tell the difference. But the difference besides that relief angle is the perpendicularity 
of the flutes is not 90 degrees. So on a finisher, they're perfectly 90 degrees. On a half inch Veramil, the flutes are not 90 degrees. That's just meant for roughing. Usually when I buy a half inch Veramil, I'll use it for finishing for a while until it gets a little dull, and then I'll start roughing with it. But if you have a production run, I would highly suggest getting a half inch or whatever size end mill Veramil if you can. This is your standard four flute carbide coated um, end mill. This is a finisher. So it does not have that, that other ground relief inside of it. And it is perpendicular 90 degrees to each other when it comes to the flutes. All right, next is a four flute carbide ball nose. And this is a finisher, it's a little beat up on the edges. And to check and see if finishers are beat up, you can use your fingernail and scrape along the flutes. And if you feel the little chips in it, you'll know that it's a little bit more dull. If it's a brand new end mill, usually you can slide your fingernail along the flute and it'll feel smooth and sharp. But you can also get to the point where you can just kind of look at it and see the dull finish. All right, the very next thing I like to talk about is a drill mill. Now, a drill mill is meant for putting chamfers on the edge of your part. Kind of looks like a, just a standard end mill, except the tip of it's 45 degrees or 90 degrees to each other. And it's just meant to put a chamfer on the edge of a part. All right, we'll show you guys how to work that in to get a certain size chamfer later on. It's fairly simple. It'll make your part look a lot better than using a file. So if you have the time, Instead of filing something, throw a drill mill on it and it'll uh, look a lot better. Okay, so here's the radius cutter. And this is just to put the radius on the edge of your part. This one's high speed steel. You can buy them in carbide as well. You can buy them with different coatings. When it comes to most of these tools, you'll uh, usually talk with somebody that's selling them and they'll have specific coatings for specific materials. They'll tell you the feeds and speeds and books and things of that nature. But if you have no idea, we're gonna show you guys how to, we'll give you an educated guess, how to get an educated guess when it comes to feeds and speeds on all these tools with certain materials. All right, very next thing I'd like to talk about is a boring head. Okay, what a boring head is used for is, let's say you have a drilled hole. Well, a drilled hole isn't exactly, exactly accurate. So if you want a perfect one inch diameter hole, what you have to do is either grind it or you can use a boring head and it'll be within, you know, a thousand or a few tenths if you know what you're doing. And it just uses the tip of this cutter and it's offset from the center of the spindle and you offset it through this dial and the dial you can crank in and out, it moves that little tip inside and out to get the diameter that you want. We're gonna show you guys how to use this in the next few videos, but if you ever want an accurate hole instead of drilling, which can lead off, this will get you a straight and perfect, perfectly round diameter hole. All right. The next few tools is meant for decking parts down to thickness or skimming the tops of them or squaring up blocks. This is a shell mill or face mill. I like to call them shell mills and it has inserts that you can flip around and so if the this edge gets dull you got four sides you can use and you can buy the inserts for high speed steel for aluminum or these actual inserts are meant for steel and you could take 150 200 thou at a time with these all right the very next thing is going to be a fly cutter and a fly cutter does the the basic same concept as a shell mill, except it uses a high speed still block, which we're going to show you guys how to grind for certain materials. And that uses to cut, most, most of the time it's going to be used for aluminum or plastic. If you're ever decking plastic, make sure to use a fly cutter. I've ran into a lot of situations where people try to deck plastic with shell mills and they'll be messing around with taper and things like that in the inside of their part. 
All right, other than that, that concludes our video for tooling. In the next following videos, we're gonna be showing you guys how to use some of these toolings, showing you guys how to square up a block with a shell mill and fly cutter. So we look forward to teaching you guys in the next following videos.